morning. Right. I thought I'd demonstrate to you what I'm uh, working on currently at the moment. As it sort of leads into a lot of other things that I'm I'm working on. But um I'm currently <clears throat> I watched a, a an interesting conversation last week about the symbology of an equilateral uh, triangle within a within a circle and the symmetry that you can see me putting one together here now that is implicit within that symbology and the sort of balance within it and the guy who I was listening to talking about it was a musician called Josh Brill She's uncannily like my name, but a slightly better version of it. Um, and uh, yeah, and as he was demonstrating, uh, or just really conveying how harmonious as a musician he finds the visual cue of the, these visual sy or the visual symbols that are fundamentally what I'm putting together here now for you. Very simple but quite powerful. And uh, it made me think of a, a cognitive scientist that I listened to a lot called John Vivaki and he made a statement recently on one of his uh, conversations that he was having with, I can't remember who it was but I remember the statement and I wrote it down and it was Transition cannot be represented. Now, I don't know why when uh, Josh Brill should have put the symbol up. I've seen equilateral triangle within, obviously, it's quite an, it's an age-old symbol. It's you're getting into, well, yeah, stuff that's thousands of years old. And um, it just made me think of that. And another sort of, well, it's, it's a disparate project that I can see some sort of alignment in, in that I, I'm going to be applying for an artist's, uh, I forget what they call it now, where you go along and you do an artist residency. Yeah, so I doubt I'll get it, but I'll give it a crack. And the reason that it made me think of it, it took me a bit of fathoming out, but what I'm trying to represent within this, and I've already done a dummy run, uh, these are gel plates that I've produced these images with. Um, I've, and the title for the, the dummy run, which will be the, the title for this one as well, is uh, Particle Triangulated to a Wave. Now, I think it's quite well known that photons and how we measure light we're having difficulty and a big part of what CERN and particle colliders are working on is what is light is it a is it a wave function or is it a particle function now for me the symbology the symbology of a of, of this circle at the center be it vacant when it's white or full when it's black is um is the particle but you could also argue that with the circumference of the larger circle or the internal circles which you can obviously I'm referencing um, what I yeah what I'm going to basically do is which is what I'm going to demonstrate to you here with this so the, this that I'm now putting together here across here is a sort of convergence that's what will happen to these so I'll do that again in a minute, but you'll be able to see now why I've cut those these into strips. These are five centimetre strips. They're all identical on each of the pieces, so that like as you can see as I put them together. Obviously, these are when I stick them down, they're even tighter together because I can really butt them up against each other then. Um, and what I'm doing is expanding it by three. And I, I'm assuming that most of you have zipped up images and photos when you send them as attachments with emails in multiples. 
Well, what happens when you sort of do that? Not that I'm a particularly techie person, but from what I understand, and correct me where I'm wrong here, what happens is, is you, when that, when you do that, when you zip an image out, you reduce it by a quarter to a third of the pixels. And they use an algorithm, and what it means is, is you can reduce a third to a quarter, or a quarter to a third of the information in terms of the pixels that are compounding or make that image up and retain the integrity of the image. Just at a lower lower fidelity, basically, is is uh, is yeah. There's obviously less data, but it's a very clever way of removing not unnecessary information, but information that could be removed. And obviously, it takes up less space and litters the internet less so there's there's all sorts of tertiary and residual reasons why it's a it's a good thing and it gets used a lot the reason that i reference it here is because what i'm sort of doing with that uh, is very similar to that but i'm not reducing i'm inducing so what you're watching here is that i put these together is the first column and I'll have three columns. This will become, and I'm about to do it now, will become the second column. And I will, I hope, well, I know I've worked them, I'm pretty sure I've worked them out right. So they will cycle through the primary colours, which also is what makes up light. These, you can't reduce down below red, yellow, or uh, blue. So that's, that's column one. And what will eventually happen is, is once I stick this down onto paper and it's all glued and flat, I'll then I'll cut a five centimetre down the length of it. The same way I have across the width of it. So there'll be five or six cuts, because they're 30 centimetres across. And then I'll bar the cut from this one and the cut from that one. So these edges, they'll go together. And the same goes for the following pieces and there'll also be another one that'll be expanding it by three by three rather than reducing it by three by three so it's sort of image induction which is another thing i'm quite interested in in showing to to CERN because i think i've invented something but i don't quite know what it is <laughs> which is often the case for me <laughs> Right, so you can see as I put them together now. Right, so that will go into that one. Hmm, I've just noticed something. Make sure I'm getting this right. There's a number coordination going on here. Yeah, I've definitely got something wrong here. Right, so five is actually the middle. Right. Okay, bear with me a moment. Let's just take these off a bit. That's better. number two so that has to be number right down there I'm pretty sure of that right again so apologies about that I'll just do it roughly so you can get uh, we'll start again it's like shuffling the deck I can't get my trick to work unless I get it right from the first time right so okay and now it should work better it's important and you'll see the context. You see how yellow is cycling on. The blue is cycled onto this side. The red, will, as you'll see from this one, will cycle onto this side. So each of these primary colours are cycling. So when I put them in context to each other, they play off of each other. So you get all sorts of... Uh, if 
you sit and stare at long look, which I can't. I have, but it makes your eyes go funny. You get some very interesting, uh, I don't know how to, misperceptions. That are very pleasing to my eye, but I think they might be disconcerting for other people. <laughs> See it still with the, the colour cycling through. So there you go. So compositionally the same. So obviously there'll be another one where another column that'll fit, obviously adjacent to this column here, the central one. Um, hopefully, if everything goes right, that'll end up as the centre circle, or there'll be a constituent of centre circles with that that will conform to that centre circle. Uh, yeah, and I'll do the same thing. Obviously, and cut them into strips along there. So what I'll do is, is it's going to take me a day or so to get this all constructed and paper stretched and dried. Is going is the difficult part with the paper at the moment. I haven't stretched it yet, so and it has to be stretched so I can keep it flat. And then when I add moisture to it, it dries again flat because there's quite a bit of glue used in putting these together. Um, yeah, and I need to get a piece of ball to die at some point as well. So what I'll do is I'll post this in a minute. If it interests you, then uh, you can uh, hopefully by this time tomorrow I'll be doing or I'll have filmed and be ready to post the uh, 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 how I construct the whole the whole image because uh, it's yeah it will radically shift from what you're looking at now, which, which is obviously two columns. And there's obviously a third column still for me to put together. Once that's, once they get put together, you get some really interesting performative visual exploits appearing because of the transition between circle, triangle, and square that finally composes it. And they all sort of there's a, there's a lot of harmony in it, but it's also yeah it's disconcerting for the eye, but. Thanks for watching. If if you enjoyed the, the content, I'm I'm going to film a bit more of uh, my process, especially as I ramp things up. With this is how I'm going to compose uh, one of the long running projects I've had running for nearly a year now, um, and which was another reason for doing it to see if it all actually comes together, and it does. So I'm very pleased with that. Uh, now all I've got to do is make it more complicated. But if you're enjoying the content, and uh, yeah, give us a like and a follow. And I'll try to get back to the comments. Um, and the works for sale at the moment is a bit uh, difficult because of uh, 
I've got a new site that's um, up and running, but it's a bit difficult for buying things. But everything's for sale. Drop me a line. Um, if you look at my profile page on YouTube, you should be able to get to my Instagram or my Facebook. Drop me a message. I'm usually about. Thanks again for watching. Hopefully I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.